C, V, 2, 2, M, D, 3, 4, S, F, 7, 2. Mamma, Asha, nobody's got to know I'm not a business. My mom, this is my business. Plus, I don't even know if I'm going to talk about it. Mamma, she's not so funny. Mom, did you know that tragedy plus time equals comedy? I gotta go. I gotta get ready for the show. Okay, Masha, but don't forget to wear your lipstick in the flash. Okay, Mom, I'd never get up in front of people without my lipstick and blush. <coughs> hey, Masha, you are many things, but no stupid. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ma Masha, are you sure you want to do this? Uh... I mean, I think so. Masha, you don't got to tell nobody nothing, you know? Mom, closets are for clothing, and I have nothing to hide in mine. Well, except for my vintage wear and sale items. <gasps> I got to go. I'm up next. Okay, Masha. Break your legs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Please put your hands together for the creator of Rome's Comedy Club and your MC for the night, Marcia Di Salvatore. Thank you. My name is Marcia Josephine De Salvatore. Marsha, because my mom liked the way the R sounded on her tongue. Marsha. 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 She liked rolling her R's like hippies like rolling their joints. <laughs> Josephine is actually after my grandma, Giuseppina. But in Italy, Giuseppina becomes juicy. So this is what that would be like in America. Hi, my name is Juicy. <laughs> you didn't get that? Uh. Juicy. <laughs> Sorry, you need me to repeat that? Juicy. <laughs> I would have rocked the porn industry with that name. De Salvatore, I actually learned how to pronounce, living in Italy. Because roll call in America was, uh, De Salvatore? De Salvatore, is she Mexican? And if they were African American, De Salvatore, hey! So I'm from Cincinnati. Yes, the reaction I normally get is silence. <laughs> but I love it how Italians try to make sense of it and they're like, ah, my cincinnati, cincinnati. <laughs> now it sounds exotic. <laughs> so my parents are from Calabria, which means my mom speaks a broken English and doesn't know how to mind her own business. <laughs> she loves calling me, and when my roommate answers, Is Marsha there? No. Okay. Tell her I'm her mother. <laughs> <laughs> My mom loves giving me dating advice. Mama Arsha, perché you no have no husband? Why you gotta be so complicata? You think I like your father? No. <laughs> but he's a nice man and I'm a nice woman. We can manage. Master. <laughs> My mom loves to make me feel better. Gosh, mom, I'm feeling kind of bloated. But well, that's okay. You would have never skinny. <laughs> si a bella così. I'm beautiful like this. Okay. So I moved to Rome, right? My first day, I go to the bar, and the barista says, A bella, get the bravado. 
Did he just call me beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> day feeling beautiful <laughs> in round second day I go back to the bar let's see if he says it sure enough Abella Casey Primato oh my god what was I doing in America this whole time nobody in Starbucks would ever call you Bella so I went about my day feeling beautiful thank god I live in Rome because I'm beautiful in Rome. Third day, I get up. I wanted more of that cappuccino and compliment. So I went to the bar. And sure enough, Amela, get you from auto. Drinking my cappuccino and I hear, Amela, it's a 70 year old toothless man with a cane. Amela, it's a hunchbacked woman with bad shoes and bad hair. Amelo, it's a filthy gypsy kid, kid with a wandering eye. And then I realized everyone is Bella in Rome. <laughs> M, D, three, three, C, V, three, two, L, T, six, five. I thought to myself, <clears throat> myself, <laughs> this is not where we need to be. We need to be with the familia, for the love, the support, the understanding. We need to be with doctors, that treat us every day and are famous for their cures. We need to be in Calabria. <laughs> I was uh, so happy to be back to the sea, the sun, a salsiche. <laughs> Not sure I was uh, gonna miss a job, but someone had to cover people's couches to pay for this paradiso. So I take my beautiful baby to the beach of Fuscaldo. Is it beach or beach? I don't know, the place with the sand. Yeah. Anyways, it was a beautiful day. There was my mother and my sister, and we were waiting for Giuseppina, my cugina. My not Giuseppina, the lawyer. No, 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 no. My not Giuseppina, the bella. No, 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 no. <laughs> Giuseppina with the big mouth. They say when she was a child, they dropped her on her head, and that's why she's a choda, crazy. But I think it's because she doesn't think before she moves her mouth. She has a terrible husband and no children. She says it's his fault. I think it's hers. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Oh, beautiful day. There's a little bit of breeze. And Giuseppina arrived with the lasagna for the lunch. She stops in front of my baby and says, Ma chi sta la bambina malata? Non è mostroso come immaginavo. She said, this is the sick baby. She's not a monster like I imagined. Now there's a bitch on the beach of Fuscaldo. <laughs> Every be everyone began to look at her. Everyone began to look at me. This is the love, the support, the understanding. I became as a pale as this, the sand I was standing on. I took my baby and I never went back to that beach again. But there was another hope. I mean, this was a Mediterranean illness and we were in the Mediterranean. I knew that the doctors would help my baby grow up to be healthy, because that's what any mother wants, a healthy baby. Il dottor Francesco Bricardi, il primario dell'ospedale di Cosenza. He was the best. I knew he could help her. I remember that day like a yesterday. I wore 
Yeah, no, not really, I don't think. <laughs> yes, but I did go to Teresa, my sister, for to have the hairs done. She's a hairdresser. <laughs> I put the baby in the rosa because it gave her color to her cheeks and it made her eyes look sparkly. <gasps> Oh, I was so, so excited we get in the car, like we go to Festa del Paese, Festa del Cerimonia, a reason to celebrate. As I wait for the doctor to come in, my heart beats so fast. He walks in, I said, buongiorno, dottore. Nothing. He was completely focused on my baby. I watched him watch her. I watched her watch him. I watched and waited for something, some words. He began to visit my baby. He didn't even say, ciao, bambina. At this point, I thought he was a little bit rude. Maybe this was his way to be professionale. He started to write. I wanted to know what. And I said, you know, I give the baby the meat. She sleeps a lot. Uh, ma, the cure how long? Cure? What cure? Uh, the treatment? Treatment? Uh, but surely there is something we can do, no? Signora, lei non deve fare niente. Perché tanto la bambina sarà morta di sotto anni. He said I gotta do nothing because my baby would die at 18. When I turn 18, I wanted to call that doctor and say, hello. <laughs> Instead, I went away to college, just like everybody else, to study art history. The beauty that man has created over the passage of time. I was so excited my first day of drawing. My professor was completely blown away when he said, Wow, drawing is really not your thing. <laughs> but I love the way you use color. Have you ever thought about a career in fashion merchandising? <gasps> I wanted to kiss that balding academic man. <laughs> because through my errors, I had discovered my career path. I would make the world a more beautiful place, one cardigan at a time. <laughs> I mean, I had always loved fashion. I'm Italian. Design and vanity are in my DNA. <laughs> Plus, I love how it made me feel. Yeah? One day, serious. The next day, pretty. The day after that, funky. <laughs> it was this creative outlet that could change my mood and get a response from people. I love getting a reaction from people. Because up to that point in my life, the very few people that really knew me would say things like, oh, that Marsha, how ever does she do it? How does she stay so strong and positive? Ugh, they felt sorry for me. They pitied me. I had no interest in that. I didn't feel sorry for myself, and I certainly didn't want people's pity. I wanted people to react to me like an independent spirit or an innovator. And soon, my love for fashion began to merge with my other love in life, music. It was the 80s and 90s, and I discovered the more outlandish I dress, the more of a reaction I got. They were based on my blood counts. They were based on the fact that I had the show de vie to dress like Cindy Lauper. I had the balls to put on an ensemble worthy of any member of the cure. And I had the taste to put on Poochie, just like Delight. I took risks. One day gothic, the next day punk. The day after that, retro. Life was already too serious, but not fashion. And what started out as a habit
began to morph into a career path. And my haberdashery-like ways began to attract attention from other fashion-forward friends. Birds of a feather flock together. On campus, the gay men would gather. <laughs> OMG, is that Prada vintage? Oh, seriously, these hot shorts are to die for! Can I borrow your boa for tonight? By the time I was 18, I had a gaggle of gay men that I called friends. They weren't like the other men that I had known up to that point in my life. These guys were free, fun, and frivolous. When we go out dancing, we dress each other up in wild outfits and with the music pumping, oonch, 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 I would let myself go and live in the moment. I didn't think about the blood flowing through my veins, just about the music pumping, and I did my thing. There was no illness in a nightclub, except for that sad white man trying to dance. <laughs> Whew, now he was someone to be pitied. It was a great time in my life. I get gussied up, bump and grind twice a week. But then in secret, I get poked and prodded twice a month in hospital. I led a double life. My mom always said, Mama Asha, nobody's got to know a nostra business. <clears throat> well, I didn't really know why until I went to third grade and met Mrs. Coombs. She was as mean as a snake. She made us small kids feel even smaller. <laughs> One day, with the usual note, Please excuse my chef I had the treatment. Mrs. Coombs read the letter out loud and then blurted out, Were you sick or were you just getting more blood? I mean, seriously? I didn't know what to say. I had never been confronted about my illness before. Certainly not in front of a classroom full of students. All the kids around me had eyeballs as big as saucers. They were amazed. And then their faces started to turn. Well, I didn't know how to describe it when I was 10, but I do now. Freaked out. And if their faces didn't say it all, their reactions did. Because, of course, nobody wanted to sit next to me in the cafeteria or play with me at recess. Nobody wanted to sit and be next to the girl. They got filled up by other people's blood. Oh. But sure enough, the next day, my mom in a fury with a few choice Italian curse words. <laughs> I stoned them. I can kill the server. Veramente. Grazie la mia bambina così muri fazzo vedere io. She set the school straight and told them never to mention my illness again. The principal was nice enough to talk to my class and tell them I was just a normal third grade girl that was had nothing to be afraid of, that I liked kickball and hopscotch, read Judy Bloom books, eat jello pudding pops, and drink tang. I was just a normal third grade girl wanting to be accepted by other third grade girls and boys. That seemed to do the trick. But between my experience in the third grade and my mom's experience in Calabria, we decided that maybe it was better to keep my illness hidden from the world. And so I began to live a double life, like Clark Kent. <laughs> One day he was a journalist at the Daily Planet. The next day he was flying off in his spandex, spandex, spandex. <laughs> I was a normal kid in elementary school. The next day, I was flying off to exotic places like South Jersey, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. <laughs> but only in a cotton poly blend and hospital to hospital.
Marsha, could you please put your arms to the side? When I was 16, I had to participate in a research study project at the National Institute of Health. Turn. I had to stand naked in front of 11 doctors. Turn again, please. Yeah, that's 22 eyeballs staring at me like a piece of scientific meat. Ugh. Turn. Analyzing every bone in my skeleton. Turn again, please. Observing my developments. Raise your arms above your head. I felt vulnerable, not to mention chilly. Please turn around. Oh, for God's sake, can I put my pants back on? Gosh, as if a week at the NIH wasn't bad enough, having to keep it a secret was even worse. I couldn't tell my friends, not even my friends. Oh my God, how was your trip to Florida? Why aren't you tan? <laughs> <laughs> it rained all week. <laughs> that sucks. Well, never mind that Florida is the sunshine state and my friend's a little naive. I would have traded any rainy week in Florida for my nude escapades at the NIH. Every time I had a treatment, I came up with an excuse. I told my boyfriend over a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos that I had a root canal that day. Um, I don't get it. Um, doesn't it hurt when you crunch? <laughs> the anesthetic hasn't worn off. <laughs> Looks like we better hurry up and finish the bag. <laughs> I would use every excuse in the book. Stomach ache, back ache, neck ache. Menstrual cramps, leg cramps, sniffles, sneezes, bugs, viruses, pneumonia. Back pain, growing pain, Ebola, mad cow, you name it, I had it. <laughs> and the list was a mile long. But no one ever questioned me. One treatment resulted in me turning jaundice. Oh my God, I'm yellow. <laughs> That's okay, Marsha, little sunshine, everything go away. Um, a little lesson in color mixing and skin care. Yellow and brown make green. I turned green! Like luck of the Irish green! Like a cuter, slimmer version of the Incredible Hulk green! I don't even look good in green! I'm more of a mob. Anyways, here's later. When I came out to my friends about my big secret, they all said, Oh, is that why you were chartreuse at your birthday party? <laughs> I was more of a sea foam green, but okay, whatever. <laughs> In college, I had a reaction to my treatment that left me pumped, and pumped up with steroids and antihistamines. I go back to my college apartment. They, all my roommates were doing bong hits. Um, where were you? Wanna hit? <laughs> I was at the library. No thanks. <laughs> Looks like we were all under the influence of drugs that day. When I moved to Rome, I had to have a 24-hour heart monitor put on. Routine check for patients like myself. Unfortunately, I looked more like I was on a kamikaze mission with bombs strapped to my chest. Lucky for me, I have a flair for fashion. I knew exactly how to layer my look as to not raise suspicion. Unfortunately, the machine had an almost inaudible sound that most people couldn't hear. Except for my roommate, Daniela. Do you hear that? Oh my God, what's that noise? Where is that coming from? Daniela started turning off every electronic device in the house. Meanwhile, I sat there like a silent liar because secrets had to be kept. Even if poor Daniela was losing her mind, but I was losing my mind, because the more secrets you have, the more lies you have to tell. The more lies you have to tell, 
The more attached you have it, everything being hidden, and then suddenly the lies start coming fast and furious, and they start layering one on top of another. Then you realize, oh my God, there's no going back, and then you have to remember all the lies that you told in the first place. And, <gasps> wow, what energy. Where in the meantime, I would just put on my happy face. Great, fantastic, great. But inside of me, my secrets were only making me suffer. <coughs> you know, the journey to my paese made me think, huh, maybe America's not so bad. So I take my beautiful baby back to Cincinnati. But having a sick baby in a foreign land is no take the cake and walk it too. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. De Salvatore, do you understand English? Uh, yes, a little bit. Mrs. De Salvatore, first we have to do the type and cross and do a screening before we can begin your daughter's treatment. The samples will be sent to the blood bank to match a donor with your baby's A positive blood type. If we have no issues with antibodies, we will then clean and filter the blood. The blood will be returned here to the hematology clinic and we will begin the 12 hour process. And in order for your daughter to thrive, we will repeat this once every three weeks. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, thanks. Mrs. De Salvatore, we are sorry, but with veins this small, it sometimes happens. We need to try different locations on her body where the veins won't rupture. When there are issues with endravenous lines, our last resource is usually the cranium, so we will try there. Okay, thank you, nurse. Mrs. De Salvatore, we usually like to tell caregivers the risks involved in this type of treatment. There are autoimmune hemolytic anemias, hypersplenism, iron overload which attacks the liver, kidneys and other vital organs, heart disease, thromboembolism and bone deformities. Mrs. De Salvatore, is there anyone we can call for you? G F four three L T seven five D M five five Ding 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 we have a winner D M five five I'm D M five five Oh my god it's better than winning bingo at a church bazaar or keno at a bar I can totally get how people get addicted to gambling. Like old ladies with their oxygen tanks playing slots in Vegas. <laughs> or welfare re recipients betting on ponies at the OTB. Or how about card sharks where their lives stop and they're playing blackjack for days on end. There's a high when you hit that sweet spot when your slots start chiming, when your horse comes in first, when you get two jacks and an ace, or when they call DM55. It's like hitting the hemoglobin lottery. DM55 is the code that the Roman hospitals gave me so I know when my donor blood is available. Don't worry, I'm not a vampire. Even though someone over here has had way too much garlic. <laughs> I have thalassemia major, also known as Mediterranean anemia. This is kind of serious. This isn't very funny. But it certainly led me to be funny 
because humor is nothing if not a defense mechanism. And while I love going into any closet and pulling things out to make myself look fabulous, I'm sort of tired of living in one. So let me say it again. I have thalassemia major, also known as Mediterranean anemia. Some people say, oh, anemia, just eat a little bit of red meat and broccoli. <laughs> I don't have that kind of anemia. I have the kind that makes me transfusion dependent. My mom would take me into the hospital once a month for my 12-hour treatment, starting at the age of six months. Now, when they call DM55, I take myself into the hospital every two to three weeks so that I can be here to tell you funny stories, dress in flattering clothing, complain about my dating prospects, <laughs> and live my life like you, you, and you. Thalassemia major is my secret. Where well, it was my secret. But now I'm sure it's safe with you, right? <laughs> you know something? I actually feel lighter having done this. Do I look slimmer? <laughs> <laughs> my mom and I hid my illness from the world because she wanted me to live a normal life. But who wants to be normal? I want to be Special, just like the sauce on a Big Mac, but everybody knows it's just ketchup, mayo, and relish. It's not a secret, it's special. And it tastes good on salads. <laughs> Secrets aren't positive. They can't create awareness and they can't create change. So from here on out, unless someone's throwing me a surprise party, <laughs> I want everything out in the open. I want people to understand though, thalassemia is a chronic illness. It's not like cancer that could go into remission or a bone that can be fixed or an infection that can be cured. It is till death do us part. Not even like marriage today, because we all know how half of those end. Not well. <laughs> I'm more than married to my treatment. Up to date, I have had 500 transfusions. That's two bags at a time. That makes 1,000 bags of blood. That's 1,000 different people that have allowed me this privilege of life. That's 1,000 gestures of generosity that make me strong and able. And if I live till I'm 80, another 500 transfusion, another thousand gestures of, de of, of donations. I'm kind of like the Blanche Dubois of blood. I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> well, in 2013, blood is becoming harder to come by. And DM55 is not a game of slots or a horse race. It's my lifeline, and I don't want to gamble with it. Mom, I called the Centro Trasmissionale, but I'm not on the list tomorrow. Amasha, you sure you hear okay? You know your father can't hear. In fact, no one in his family can hear very well. Dad, Ma, Dad hears just fine. He just doesn't want to hear you. <laughs> Cosa? I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm not on the list. They don't have blood for me. OK, why don't you call La Familia in Calabria? Oh yeah, the ones that eat lasagna on the beach <laughs> in the summer and called me Mostro when I was a child? Yeah, no. Oh, dear Santa, what are we going to do? Okay, Mom, calm down. I'm fine. I'll be okay. I'll call you tomorrow. Gosh, now I need to calm down. 
Well, if, if I don't have blood, I can't go to Maria's fancy cocktail party. If I can't go to Maria's fancy cocktail party, I can't wear my new Betsy Johnson dress. If I can't wear my new Betsy Johnson, wait a minute, this is not a fashion emergency. This is serious. If I don't have blood, I can't live. Um, yeah, I want my treatment. <laughs> no, I have to have my treatment. I need my treatment. I mean, some people say things like, oh, what about some Bikram yoga, herbs, vitamins? Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> um, no, uh-uh. <laughs> I need a transfusion or I'm toast. <laughs> some well-intending friends asked me to help them to find blood for their friend that was dying of leukemia. And I thought, um, hello, <laughs> I'm dying every two to three weeks, but I took a step back and I thought beyond myself. If their friend needs blood and I need blood, how many other people need blood? Blood is not manufactured or man-made. You can't get it from a stone. It's only given by generous donors. So I began to think, maybe it was time to beat my gambling odds and not rely on the kindness of strangers. And while my, you know, I no longer lived in my closet, my closet was no longer for harboring secrets, it was time to just be proactive and ask people, can you donate? Will you come to my blood drive? See you at the Centro Transfusionale? When I was open, People were open. Yeah, I'll go donate. Great. Oh, but wait, there are rules. <laughs> Have you been to Asia or Africa in the last six months? Have you taken any antibiotics or illicit drugs in the last week? <laughs> Have you been whoring it up lately? Because <laughs> <sighs> if you say yes to any of these questions, you can't donate. Some of my more interesting friends have been turned down. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to find some people who are fear flying, drug free, and frigid. <laughs> <laughs> I do hear, oh my god, I'm afraid of needles. Um, the tribal tattoo on your arm, did that hurt? Yeah, get your ass to the chest <laughs> now. <laughs> Seriously, oh, I'm going to need a costume change for this next bit. People, people, blood donation is a serious thing. I think I need to be more serious. It is a, no, I can't see. It is a serious thing. Every year, the world blood supply is steadily dwindling because 90% of that is based on voluntary, unpaid donations. But who is it that needs this blood? Not just me. Cancer patients need blood. Pregnant ladies need blood. Any run-of-the-mill surgery needs blood. Car accident victims sometimes need more than one transfusion at a time. But you're asking yourself, I'm sure, but who is it exactly? Well, let's do a little exercise together. I want everybody to turn and look to the person to their right. Look at them. No flirting. <laughs> I want everyone now to turn and look to the person to their left. Great. And I want everyone to turn and look to the person's back of their head. I don't even know what I'm saying. Let's just do this easier. One in four person in this room is going to need a blood transfusion at some point in their lives. That's why blood donation is fundamental. Not just for me, for everyone. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Marcia Di Salvatore! Uh, 
a typical day teaching English in Rome. <laughs> My name is Marsha. I'm a teacher. I'm American and I live in Rome. Dunque, questo studiato ieri. Aspetta un altro. I am Paolo. I live in Rome and I'm an office worker. I am Teresa. I have 25. I live in Rome. I have a boyfriend. And I am a car. Allora, che cazzo devo dire? Mica parlo it inglese, io parlo romano. I am a Massimo. I live in Rome. I am a driver. <laughs> okay, let's describe our house. I live in an apartment. It has one bedroom, one bathroom, one kitchen. Don't cry! I live in an apartment. It's composed of one bedroom, one bathroom, one kitchen. Stop! <laughs> My name is Teresa Ayat. I have one apartment very nice. I live with your mother, your father, and your sister. Chicken, very big. Touch <laughs> it. I live in an apartment. It's got a one bedroom, one bathroom. I got a scabuzzi. Go cast it as easy, scabuzzi. <laughs> As you can see, I teach a lot of characters. But I guess we're all characters. Then I think about me and the fact that I have a blood transfusion every two to three weeks. How many characters have donated to me? <laughs> I mean, I have different bits of different people flowing through my veins. I could be a Jewish lawyer, part Chinese tailor, Part Irish drunkard. I could be a foot model, a physicist, or a fantastic oboe player. You could say I'm a mentally sane girl with multiple personalities. And now some of them would like to come out and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do ever so much love donating blood, but for the longest time I couldn't donate because of the whole mooka parts of Mad Cow. But I do say that in the UK I even have my own pin that says I'm a donator. Oh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Girl, you know what I'm saying. My baby daddy, he's got some illnesses called sickle cell anemia, and I want my baby daddy to live, so I'm going to give him a little piece of myself. You know what I'm saying? So I give him, I donate blood, and I feel good. And I know he's living because of me. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> you know my neighbor, he was a Sikh. I wanted a giornata free. So I go and I donate the blood. So I stay home and watch the Partita della Roma. You know what I gotta say? My neighbor is alive. I feel good. A hey, Forza Roma! Hey. <laughs> that I could thank each person that has donated to me over the course of my lifetime. But unfortunately, I can't really write a thousand thank you cards. And I certainly don't want to lick a thousand envelopes. <laughs> so I'd rather just leave you with this. 
I stand before you as a whole person transfusion dependent because my life depends on it. Every two to three weeks because of someone's generosity, I'm able to live my life like you. I was able to have a crush on Warren Levenix in the third grade because someone gave me blood. I was able to pass high school chemistry by the skin of my teeth because <laughs> someone gave me blood. I was able to mosh pit at the Nine Inch Nails concert in college because someone gave me blood. I was able to graduate college in fashion merchandising, go to a full moon party in Thailand, spend my 21st birthday in Sweden, and date because <laughs> someone gave me blood. I was able to move to Rome, toast at my first gay wedding, become a clown doctor, and speak at an American university, and start the only English comedy show in Rome <laughs> because someone gave me blood, and I thank you. Volunteers from the Federation uh, and Association for Donators of Di Sangue in Italia. So it's very, very easy to donate blood. Um, uh, a lot of the hospitals have signage everywhere. You can go to Gemelli, you can go to San Eugenio, etc., etc. I like to like sort of remind myself to go. Okay, it's time to go to the dentist. I go to the dentist every six months, and then I know, boom, it's time to donate blood again. So please, if you feel so moved to do so check out the flyers and talk to the volunteers if you can, if you Raise have any your questions. Hands. Volunteer they are right here. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you all for coming. Thank you.